In this video, I will show you how to create your own Java annotations. And um, why would you create your own Java annotations? Well, there are uh, three primary uh, use cases for that. First of all, you can use the Java annotations as passive documentation in your code. And in that case, the annotations will not have any functionality. They will just be there um, and send a message to whoever reads the code the next time. So this is um, helping for the next maintainer of your code. The second use case is to use it as uh, input for a Java source code processor. And that means that you will have some kind of program that reads through your Java source code and locates your Java annotations and does something to them. This is not a very common use case, but it is a possible use case. And then and the last use case too for creating your own Java annotations is that the annotations function as input for some Java library that accesses your annotation at runtime via Java reflection. And uh, in case you are designing some Java library, which takes some uh, classes or objects as input, then it can be useful to allow uh, these classes and objects to be annotated. Several well-known Java frameworks are actually using their own Java annotations. And for instance, the Spring framework, the Jackson JSON toolkit, and Hibernate, and a whole list of other frameworks that I have left out here. As long as you, you get the um, the idea that when you're designing a framework, it can be really useful to also design your own annotations for it, then that is what you need to understand right now. Defining a custom Java annotation is done very similarly to defining a Java class or a Java interface. You create a new file, um, as you can see I have done here inside of an IntelliJ. I've called it my annotation. I Inside this file, I count it actually myannotation.java, as you can see here. Inside this file, I simply write the keyword public to make this annotation publicly available outside of the package that it is located in. And then I write this keyword here, the ampersand interface keyword. And that means that this is an annotation. So even though it says interface here, the ampersand in front of it um, tells the Java compiler that this is an annotation. And then I write the name of my annotation here, which is in this case, my annotation. And then I have the annotation body. And in this case it's empty, but I will show you um, very shortly how to add some features to the annotation. Before I show you how to um, put a body inside the my annotation here, the de definition, I just want to show you quickly how you can now already use a my annotation. And you can see I have another class here. Um, and I have annotated the class with my annotation up here. I write the ampersand character and then I write the name of the annotation that I want to add to this class here. And as you can see in this example, I have included this um, annotation quite a lot of places here. And this is not because it makes sense to include the same annotation a lot of times in the same class. These are just examples of where this annotation can be used. So, um, so just keep that in mind. Normally you will just have the annotation maybe once or twice in a class or wherever it makes sense. You can provide properties um, for a Java annotation. And in order to show that I will just create a new Java annotation first, I create a new package for it. Um, I will create a new Java annotation. I will call it custom annotation. And um, then I can define properties in here in the body, inside the body of the annotation definition. And the first one I will call name and the second I will call count. Now that I have defined this custom annotation, I will show you how to actually use it in a class. And let me just close these two here. So I create a new class, which I call custom annot annotation example, like that. And um, 
now I can write the custom annotation up here. Look what happens. The Java compiler is telling me that I have not provided values for the two properties, name and count. In order to do that, I have to write the name of the property and then the value. And this is how that looks. Now I've provided values for name. I've set it to the string John and I've provided a value for the property count and set it to the value one, two, three. A property can also be an array of, of values, for instance, an array of strings. And uh, in that case, case, providing values for it looks a little bit different. You can see up here, I'm being asked by the Java compiler to provide values for the uh, tags uh, property. And in order to provide values for an array, I simply uh, create an array like this. And like I use the curly braces here and then I provide values, right? This can be Java, this can be examples, annotations, or whatever, right? This is just a list of an array of strings. It is also possible to provide default values for the properties here. And let me just show you how that looks. Default. Um, check and default 999, right? What happens then when you provide a default value? It means that you do not actually have to provide a value for this property. Look at this. I can now delete name because it has a default value. And now the value of the annotation uh, of, of the property name will be set to the default value, which is Jack. And the same is true for count. Instead of the value 1, 2, 3, I can simply now use the default value, which is 999. And um, so that is how you provide default values. And this can be really useful in some cases where you will only deviate from the default value in, in rare cases. Instead of having to repeat the same default value every, everywhere you use the custom annotation, it is just nicer to just have these values specified inside the annotation as defaults. Now let me just provide a default value for the tax property as well, because then uh, it will be easier to show uh, more examples using this custom annotation without me having to write values for tax every time. So I just provide Java, annotation, and whatever values I would feel like. Having provided a default value for the tax property, I can now also remove it over here. Now I don't have to write it every time. You get the, the point. In fact, I can leave out the parentheses as well. Um, you can use the custom annotation here uh, also in, to annotate methods. Let me just show how that is done. I simply write the custom annotation above the method and that now the do it method is annotated with this custom annotation. But it is actually possible to restrict uh, where an annotation can be used because some annotations are perhaps only designed to annotate classes or types and other uh, annotations are designed only to annotate methods. So let's have a look at how to restrict where an annotation can be used. The way you restrict where an annotation can be used is by inserting uh, another annotation inside the uh, declaration of the annotation. So I will use this built-in annotation. This is a built-in uh, annotation in, in Java. And um, I can choose between, as you can see, I have some um, choices here for constants that I can pass as parameter to the declaration of or, or the insertion of this um, annotation. And um, I can choose, for instance, 
to say that this annotation can only be used on types, right? So it can only be used when declaring a new type or on front of the declaration of a type. Now you can see that the, the compiler accepts this usage of the custom annotation, but not the one that is used to annotate a field or a constructor or a method. Those are no longer valid. And that is because I have said over here that now this annotation, custom annotation, can only annotate type declarations. And a type declaration is an interface or a class or another um, annotation or an enum, etc. I have other choices here. Uh, as you can see, I have field. If I choose field instead of type, let's have a look at that. Now, all of a sudden, it is no longer valid to annotate the class, but I can annotate the field. And you can see it's still invalid to annotate the constructor and the method. In the same way, I can, I can choose constructor here. You can see now it changes. The constructor is now valid, and the other usages of the annotation are invalid. And I have one that is called method as well right here and now you can see the annotation of the method do it here is valid but the rest are invalid and you can play around with these choices here yourself but you can see there are quite a few to choose from here you can see you can um, also annotate a module or a package or a parameter inside a method um, for instance if this method uh, here was uh, were to, to take a parameter and you can see here at custom annotation and now it is invalid but if I change here to parameter instead then you can see all of a sudden the annotation up here is invalid but the annotation down here is valid You can also specify whether an annotation is to be inherited, which basically means that, uh, let me just remove the target again here. Uh, you can see now all the usages are valid again. I can tell whether the uh, an annotation that is being used, whether it is inherited. So if I specify here that it's inherited, then that means that all classes that extend this custom annotation example class here, um, which is annotated. They will also have annotations, uh, the annotations inherited. So a subclass will inherit the do it method and it will appear as if the custom annotation here is also annotated on the subclass because the um, annotation here is specified to be inherited. You can also specify whether an annotation should be included in the Java doc of the classes that are using the annotation. And the way you do that is simply by inserting the uh, built-in Java annotation documented um, in, in, uh, before the declaration of your custom annotation. And then when the Java doc is generated for custom annotation, it will be uh, listed as um, the usage of the custom annotation inside this custom annotation class example java doc will be listed so it's now visible from the java doc that this class here is they're using this annotation here finally let's have a look at the retention uh, of an annotation and the retention means um, where the information about the usage of the annotation is kept and let me just give you a few examples of that I specify the retention of an annotation simply by inserting here um, the retention annotation which is also a built-in Java um, 
annotation and you can see I have three choices. I can either specify source, class or runtime. And let me just try to um, use them one at a time and explain to you how this retention or how each retention policy affects um, the information that is stored uh, about this, the usage of this annotation. So in case I choose the retention policy source, that means that information about the custom annotation example class using this annotation is only visible in the source code, just like you can see here. There is no information about the usage in the class files, and there is no information available at runtime. If I change the retention poli policy to class, then you can see from the source um, code that the annotation is used, but this information will also be compiled into the class files. And that means that um, if you have a tool kit of some kind, which is scanning class files uh, instead of source code, then that tool will be able to see that this custom annotation example class here is using, is annotated with a custom annotation. But the information will not be available uh, at runtime via reflection. It will only be available if you scan through the class files. The last retention policy you can choose is runtime. And that means that the information of the usage of custom annotation here above this class or any other place that it is used above this field or above this constructor or method or parameter, that is also available at runtime. That means that you can access it via Java reflection. And how you do that is outside the scope of this tutorial. But if you look at the description below this video, I have a link to an article that explains how to access um, the annotations used in a class at runtime via Java reflection. That is all I have to show you about how to create your own custom Java annotations. As mentioned earlier in this video, if you look at the in the description below the video, you will find links to a textual version of this tutorial, plus links to other videos and other resources related to uh, Java annotations.